Hello, I'm Jamal Nyers and welcome to the first edition of Real Talk, the University of Salford's brand new weekly film show where we'll be talking all things film. This week I'm joined by my fellow film buff, Morgan Robinson. Now, to our first segment on the show, the weekly rundown. But as it's our first show, we'll be discussing the best flicks from the last month. Now, Morgan, September has been another massive month for film. One of the highlights, of course, is Darren Aronofsky's new film, Mother. Did it match up against his cinematic portfolio? I mean, f for me personally, absolutely. It's up there with his sort of weirdest and best stuff. I mean, to put it up with something like Black Swan, which is, I think, far and away his best, is, I think, a bit too much. But I was a big fan of Mother, and I know that it got, uh, did get a lot of flack from critics and audience and audiences uh, alike. But I was happy to go on this bizarre, insane ride that it took me on. In terms of the negative reviews of the film, I think a lot of people had a problem with the fact that it was billed as Aronofsky, Aronofsky's first true horror film. Now, as a massive Aronofsky fan, he has a lot of horror elements throughout his films, and I thought, you know, this, this would be genius by him to go down the horror route. It didn't exactly match up to that billing. What were your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Aronofsky does have those horror tendencies in his films. We talked, I talked about Black Swan just then. That is a heavy psychological horror. And so is Mother. I'm there sat in the screening of Mother feeling very, very stressed out and very, very tense. As and was, it, ta was I. it takes something to make a horror film do that to me, so I've got to give Aronofsky full credit for that. Now, it's undeniable that there was another true horror film out in September. We all know what it was. It was Stephen King's It remake, one that certainly lived up to expectations. What were your thoughts on that? I was a big, big fan of it, and while I don't necessarily think it scared me as much as even Mother did, um, I think it was a very, very well-made film and a very, very fun film. More of a, a coming-of-age film rather than a horror, I'd say, personally. But I think that's sort of the beauty in it. In terms of Pennywise being a possible new art horror icon for this generation, do you think he now stands up there with the best, Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers? I think maybe for today's sort of teenage audience who helped it become a box office monster, uh, I think he will definitely at least you know, the new Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise, will definitely become a horror icon for today's uh, kids. Maybe putting it up to Michael Myers is a bit too much, but uh, OK. Now, speaking of horror films, last week I caught up with Simeon Halligan and Andrew Ellis to discuss their latest horror film, Habit, which premieres at Grimfest this week. So, Simeon and Andrew, thanks a lot for joining us today. Could you tell us about your latest release, please? Tell us about what the plot is. Uh, yes, this film's called Habit, um, and it's um, it's very much a Manchester-based movie because we shot it all in Manchester and did all the post-production in Manchester. Um, I guess it's a horror movie um, of sorts, um, and it's uh, it's the story of uh, a character called Michael and his mate Dig, and Dig is played by Andrew Ellis. Hello. Uh, and they're two guys that kind of you know a bit down on their luck. And uh, you know, the life is a bit it's not brilliant. And then um, Michael is sucked into this underworld that w the film imagines is happen exists uh, in, underneath the, the, the real world of Manchester. Um, he's kind of introduced this massage pilot by this girl that he meets called Lee, who's played by Jessica Barden in the film. And she introduces uh, him to her uncle's ma uh, her uncle apparently owns this massage parlor. And so, but actually, it's a cover for something much darker that goes on beneath the massage parlour. He's kind of brought into their world and becomes one of the, one of them and gets involved in what they do, which is very dark and sinister. I think I'm right in believing that this is the first film, a uh, horror film filmed in Manchester since 1974. Oh, wow. Yeah, so what is it I'm about? I'm not sure that's totally fact? true, actually. It depends, it, it, it's... Um, you could correct me. If well, it, and it's funny, because we've been asking that question and I put it out on Facebook the other yeah. day, and there are there is some obscure films that have been made in in Manchester that are horror films, I suppose, but they're not well known. They're t you know they're really yeah, really not yeah, well known. Right. I mean, the, the the last one that's really well known is um, the Living Dead in the Manchester Morgue, which yeah. was shot in 1974 yeah. or released in 1974. Um, but ironically, it's only like the first five minutes of the film, if that, that are shot in Manchester, and they shot the rest of it in the Lake District. Oh, really? It's, it's actually a Spanish movie. 
um, Spanish production, and um, you could tell that their geography of the, yes. in the north of England was not very strong. Bit so, game they, of so, yeah. so, in the, <laughs> so in the script, it's always like they're talking about Manchester. They're in the, most of it taking place in the Lake District, yeah. and they're talking about Manchester that, as if it's like just just, just round the around, corner. Yeah. 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 Um, there were seen in twenty eight days. Is that a horror? That's twenty eight days. days like, they go come, from they come to Manchester. Yeah, don't they, they don't. They never get here. Don't they? I remember seeing it smoking in the. They're in the countryside for the latter part of the film. Yeah, there's twenty eight days later, and it's like, well, not really. It starts in London. They end up heading to Manchester, like you say. They don't ever quite get. They end up in that big mansion, don't they? Yeah, which, yeah. Which is somewhere, maybe in Gen Ch Cheshire yeah. or somewhere. Yeah. But they never actually make it to Manchester. So it's not set in the city of Manchester. Um, if they'd have made it, different film. Th I mean, been there, saved. there is one or two fil things that I could films that I could mention that have now been um, highlighted to me that were shot in Manchester and around Manchester, but they're so obscure yeah. that unless you really know your films and you really know the history of Manchester filmmaking, yeah. Not really know about them, so yeah, I'd, you know, there is no yet to be said that Habit in, in is like the first first horror that's been shot in Manchester in a long, long time, yeah. and uses Manchester as a kind of backdrop and, yeah. and a, almost a character in the film. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of um, horrifying moments, was there anything on set that genuinely made your skin skin crawl in terms of maybe a scene you had to film or a scene you had to watch? Um, when watching the film. Probably, because like I say, I, I wasn't really involved in, in many of the kind of the scary, uh, gory scenes. But when watching the film, yeah, there's, there was definitely a few where I was like, "Whoa!" Like, because yeah. um, it was all kind of real effects, wasn't it, and prosthetics and stuff like that. There wasn't any any CGI or any of that kind of madness, Not really. Was there? So no. that was nice, and that was refreshing to to see actually, like, you know, if if someone's getting a chunk bitten out of them or whatever, like it's actually it looks the part. So. That, I think, kind of makes you go, oh, again, rather than, you know, like nowadays there's loads of films where I think the magic of film can be lost sometimes because anything can happen on a film now. Yeah. But when you actually go back to using real stuff, like the new Star Wars and stuff like that, they've gone yeah. back to using actual puppets and stuff, it makes it's you appreciate more believable, it more. Yeah, it, it makes you go, oh, that's that's amazing how they've done that. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of moments of that where you, you wince a bit when you're watching it and go, oh, God, that's a bit, yeah. that's a bit nasty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to be on the, the front cover of a film review. For the yeah, film. That's, that's a bit nice nice quote. <laughs> <laughs> there all day. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, it's been great speaking to you both, and I, I can't wait for the premiere. Thanks so, thanks a lot. Cheers. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Now it's time for the blast from the past, the part of the show where we recommend our favourite films for you at home. Now, Morgan, there's a lot of films on offer from the past. What is your recommendation for the week? Well, my recommendation this week, it coming up to Halloween now, it is October. What better time to start your classic horror binge? And I'm going with one of my all-time favourites, a film that celebrated its 40th anniversary this year. That is Dario Argento's Suspiria, wow. uh, one of the... Uh, the pinnacle of Italian giallo horror filmmaking, and that's neon-filled, sort of very, very intensely scored, beautifully, beautifully shot film. Uh, and Dario Argento is an absolute master at doing that. I love, love, love Suspiria. It's this incredible, crazy, uh, just supernatural, witch-filled, ballet-filled uh, gore fest and I adore it. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna go with something that's very overlooked as well. I'm going to go with Michael Mann's 2004 epic Collateral. In my opinion, it was Tom Cruise's best role so far. He plays a hitman that is required to go around the city and complete um, five jobs. And he steps into a taxi driver's cab, played by Jamie Foxx, who he then, you know, he says, unless you ta don't take me to these um, places, I'm going to have to kill you as well. So mm -hmm. it's a very horrifying situation for Jamie Foxx and it was an amazing performance from him. He got nominated for his second Oscar the year after he got nominated for Ray. Yes. So a brilliant performance, amazingly shot from Michael Mann. You know, I think he's the best action director, one, one of the best action directors of all time. He's so overlooked in that department. He has um, blank, he, he has blanks firing on his guns. You know, mm -hmm. hardly any music playing when action shots are being filmed. So he, it's very raw, visceral, real and on top of that, the soundtrack is outstanding. Outstanding as an amazing soundtrack from Audio Slave, which is an amazing band. So, well, Collateral isn't actually one I've 
ever seen. So oh, really? maybe I'll take that into account. Have I, have I pitched it well to I you, Morgan? I think you have. Well, hopefully you and everybody else at home can watch it. But now this segment next is called Guess the Film. And each week we want you guys at home to tweet in and solve our film-related question or problem. If you think you know the answer, tweet us at Real Talk Keys and we'll read out the correct answer on next week's show. And now it's time to look to the future and we took a trip to home cinema to discuss what's on. So we are here outside home cinema for the first edition of Sneak Peek. More than a ton of films out at the moment, but the biggest one being released this week is obviously Blade Runner 2049. 35 years after the original. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, right before you get into the height of Oscar season in November, you get these nice little end of September, October films coming out. Blade Runner 2049, like you said, 35 years after 1982's original. Ridley Scott directed Blade Runner. You've got Harrison Ford back as Rick Deckard. Uh, you've got Ryan Gosling, everything looks Ryan Gosling. Um, and of course, the man with the biggest hot streak in film directing currently, Denis Villeneuve, coming off Enemy Prisoners, Sicario, and Arrival. Yeah, that's a damn good streak, right? He's a very good streak, and he's also been linked to the possible director's role with the latest Bond movie that's due to come out in two years' time. Speaking of si um, spy films, we also have Kingsman that is out at the moment. Should fans be looking at that as a potential ticket option this week, Morgan? Yeah, I mean, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, or Kingsman 2, whatever, has been out for a week now. Maybe maybe this has been on your radar if you were a big fan of the first one. I know a lot of people was. I wasn't necessarily as big a fan, fan of the uh, original Kingsman as most people. But I think if you are a, uh, if you do like these action spy type uh, fun times of the movies basically you've got the uh, cast of Taron Egger and Colin Firth coming back of course and you've got a load of American statesmen they're calling them yeah. in this one with the likes of Jeff Bridges and Channing Tatum and Pedro Pascal over in Martel from Game of Thrones for all my Game of Thrones lovers out there big one here we also have another horror remake Morgan. yes we another do. one you, you are the horror guy I'm guessing you're not a big fan of the idea of horror remakes, but we have one this week, Flatliners. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, some horror remakes, full credit to them, are great. Of course, let's not forget that John Carpenter's 1982 The Thing is a remake. It's uh, true. Of course, we've seen a lot, a lot of horror remakes over the past 15 years, so it's kind of been the 21st century thing for the most part with horror parts in the last two years, which have been pretty good. Good set up for the genre. But yes, Flatliners, we have uh, Kiefer Sutherland is coming back from the 1990 original. He's a recurring cast member. Uh, I'm not sure how big his role is necessarily, but I do know he's in that. Headline in it, you've got Ellen Page, of course, most people will still recognise from Juno 10 years ago now. She's still carrying that baby, Morgan. Uh, I don't think she is. <laughs> It'd be pretty weird if she was. Uh, but Juno's great. <laughs> um, you've also got Diego Luna in that as well, Cassie and Andor from Rogue One for all the Star Wars fans. Yeah. And also, there's a ton of movies that have been out in the cinemas for a while that are still an option for you film fans. Uh, American Assassin is out. Great cast on that one as well, isn't it, Morgan? Yes, Michael Keaton, that's what you buy that ticket for American Assassin. You're going for Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton himself is on a great hot streak. He really is. And apparently Michael Keaton bites someone's ear off in that movie, so if I've not sold you on that film enough, that is your ticket right there. Now, wrapping this up, this was a great show this week, and we will be coming back next Monday even better. So thanks a lot for watching, and see you then. Cheers.